Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Chill Survival Series. Today we're going to do a massive overhaul of our farmland, and finally build up a really nice space for our crops. But first, I'm still in this desert because I have some business to attend to. Now in the last episode, I asked you all what I should name one of my camels. And there were a lot of really great suggestions. Now the one that I ended up going with is... Charlington Duke III. And I'd like to say a big thank you to Mesa for suggesting that name. And thank you to everybody who commented name suggestions. There were so many great ones and it was really hard to choose. My noble friend, I hereby dub thee Charlington Duke the Third. And Charlington, since you are the most noble camel, I leave you with the task of looking after this sanctuary. It is no easy task, but I have all the faith you are more than capable. I actually just don't want to bother traveling home with a camel. It's more work than it's worth. Now there's one more suggestion I got for this camel sanctuary, and it was to give a name to the sanctuary itself, with that name being Tony's Taxi Rentals. And now I think we can officially say that this camel sanctuary is absolutely complete. And big thank you to Denisha for that wonderful suggestion. The OGs will definitely know that reference. All right, so with all of that done, that means we can head back and start working on some projects at home. Boy, my feet are definitely gonna hurt after this. Maybe I should have brought Charlington. Eh, it's too late now. Ah, it feels good to finally be home. We've been gone for quite a while and I've really come to miss this place. But we can't stand around for too long just staring at everything because we've got a huge project on our hands. It is time to tackle this giant mess of an area behind me. So let me pull her up really quickly to go over the plan. So I basically want to make farmland all around this lake with a windmill placed on the top section right over here. But as you can see, this area is kind of a mess right now. And I was thinking that we could maintain some of these cliff edges. However, a lot of this just really needs to be smoothed out. So that's definitely going to be the first thing we start with so we can get a better sense of the terrain that we actually have to work with. Every time I try to do something, these stinky guys show up. Then I gotta drink milk. It's just a whole thing. Haven't they learned not to mess with me by now? I mean, look at me. Don't I look threatening? <laughs> I couldn't even take that sentence seriously. All right, I'm gonna start dumping a bunch of water everywhere to clear out all of this grass. I wanna clear it all out because it makes it a lot harder to see what we're working with in terms of terrain. Sorry. Oops. Goodbye. All right, so you can kind of see how taking some time to get rid of some of the grass along here has given me a better idea of the terrain we have to work with. So now I think I can begin smoothing out some of this terrain. So I think this is looking really good for the shape of the farmland. I tried my best to shape out some plateaus so we can plant some crops along them. Now this is a little bit of a steeper area so we are gonna have a lot more cliffs and stuff but I think it's still gonna look pretty cool. And if not, we can always make some adjustments to it after. Now the big question is where is this windmill gonna go? I feel like having it somewhere along here would be perfect. If it's too far left to the cliff, I feel like it's just gonna look kind of awkward with that cliff side there, which means we'd have to fill in this entire area. And I was kind of picturing building a bridge or something to connect these two pieces rather than filling the cave in. So I think having it in this middle point would be perfect, especially because we could get a path going from this section along with one circling around the lake. So we've got our spot picked out and now all we need to do is figure out what this thing is gonna look like. So of course we want this build to fit in theme with some of the palettes and vibes we have with our other builds. So I'm definitely thinking we should incorporate these spruce beams with oak walls and maybe some other blocks that we kind of pull from here as well. So let's grab some of our sprucies and our oak. Gravel's great for texture. Can't go wrong with some cobblestone and mossy cobble. And one thing I thought would be cool to incorporate into this build was maybe some of the sandstone that we grabbed from the mesa as well as the terracotta. However, this terracotta could look really nice if we dyed it green. So I'm gonna pop some of this cactus in that we got from the desert. I'm gonna stash a little bit of this aside because I'd like to make a cactus his farm eventually. All right, that should be good. And let's combine some of this together to give ourselves some green terracotta blocks. All right, let's lay out some of these blocks to see what the palette's looking like. Then at the end, we've got the orange sandstone, which complements all of the other ones really nicely. Now, I think the orange sandstone is going to be reserved for the roof as well as the green terracotta. Yeah, I really like this palette. All right, I guess with that settled, it's time to build this thing. So I'm gonna start with the base of the windmill, which is gonna be made of stone. I really like mixing gravel in with cobble. It helps give things more of a weathered vibe. 
Next, let's put in a little build to the side of this thing. But in order to do so, I gotta take out this wall. And then we could start the build right here. And for this, we're gonna use the classic palette of oak and spruce. Now let's just build this up. Let's strip all this wood. And you know we gotta change some of these foundational pieces to barrels. All right, all right, we got a good foundation going. Now it's time to put in a roof on these things. And I think I'm just gonna go with the classic for this build. There's gonna be a lot of other details going in, so sometimes it's nice to keep other things a little bit more simple. We got the shape for the bottom half done and that's looking really good. Now we just need to fill these guys in. All right, we gotta build the tower for the windmill blade next and that's gonna require a ton of wood. So I've got a bit of chopping to do before we can continue on. All right, we're fully restocked on our spruce, so now let's get this tower up. We want to give this thing some good height, so I think at least nine blocks should do the trick. It's not looking like much yet because we don't have the windmill in place, nor do we have a roof, but it's definitely getting there. So for this roof, I said I wanted to use some green terracotta along with some moss. However, I had the idea that incorporating some melons could look really cool as well. And I'm pretty sure I grabbed some of those seeds a while back. All right, melon seeds, melon seeds, beetroot, cocoa. Do I not have them? I have melon slices. Okay, there we go, there we go. Which we can in turn make melon seeds. And also if we're feeling lazy, we can and also convert them back into melons. Now let me plant some of these guys over here. And we'll let those guys grow. Now we can finally get the top of this windmill in place. We'll get a little trim up like this. Then I'm gonna get rid of these guys because they kind of acted as placeholders so I could place the slabs. And now let's build this thing up using the block palette we chose. And I'm gonna go for a tower shape for this rooftop. That way this windmill will get some extra height and it will add some difference to the roofs that we already have in place. And then for the final piece on top, we'll get a granite wall, a spruce fence, and a flower pot. All right, let's see how this is looking. Ooh, yes, perfect. This is coming together really nice. So the last big thing we need to add in is the windmill blade. However, I'm gonna finish off the rest of this roof trim and a couple of other details before we do that. And while I'm doing this, I would just like to take a moment to say if you're enjoying this video and are interested in subscribing, I would really appreciate it. We're getting closer to 200k on this channel, which is pretty unbelievable to be honest. But yeah, any support to help get me to that goal is greatly appreciated. Nice, this is really coming together. All right, I think we can finally add the windmill blade in, which means we gotta go pay a visit to our sheep. Hello, hello, my friends. It has been quite a while since I've seen you all. Yes, I do feel terrible that I have not given you a proper home yet, but I promise we will make something very nice for you all soon. Yeah, we're definitely gonna need a lot more wool than that. It's all right, it's all right. Maybe I have some in here. I have approximately one. So it looks like I am definitely gonna be playing the waiting game. That's okay, I can wait. Looks like we've got some friends over here as well. And it looks like some of you have already grown your wool back. All right, I think 32 should be more than enough. I think I'm ready to put up this windmill blade. So let's get a post going out like this. And on each side, we're gonna have a grindstone to act as the gears. Then from there, we're kind of gonna make like a staircase using this wool. And at the end of the blade, so it's actually the right size, we're gonna make these pieces longer. And then I'm gonna attach fencing going all the way down. Windmills can be kind of complicated and there's so many different things you can do with them, but this is a design that I've used before in one of my other worlds and it's pretty simple but effective. Last blade going in now. Oh God, can I make it? Oh, oh, oh my gosh, swag. Let's get the last little bit of detail in with the fencing. All right, let's see if I did this right. <laughs> I did it wrong. I did it wrong. This is just an X. <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> these two are all wrong. That is not a sweeping motion. I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier to build these things in creative when you can fly around and constantly make sure you're doing the right thing. Basically, these blades have to run more horizontal than they do downwards. All right, is this the right shape for real this time? Yes, that looks perfect. It looks like it has a really nice subtle sweeping motion. That is exactly what I wanted. 
Yay. All right, the base of this windmill is done. However, I've come to think that maybe this isn't the only build I want on top of this hill. When viewing it from over here, it honestly looks so good. However, it also looks kind of isolated. So I was thinking that this farmland might stand out a little bit more if we add in a couple more windmills. So maybe we can place another one close by around here and maybe on one of these plateaus as well. Let's just give ourselves a little bit more space over here and we can get one in right around here. I'm just trying to make sure the windmills are not directly in line with each other. Otherwise, it could look a little goofy. Yeah, I think I like the placement of those two right there. However, I do see some other good spots that might be good if we add some more. But let's just work on these two for now and see how it looks when they're done. All right, and here's what it's looking like with three windmills put up. And honestly, I think three is the way to go. I contemplated putting an extra one down here and maybe one off to the left over here, but I think these balance each other out perfectly. So I kind of debated changing up some things like the roof color to add some more variants. But honestly, I think I like all of them relatively the same. I think it adds cohesion and consistency. I did, however, make the effort to make them different in some ways. Like this one is the tallest one that we have. This guy is a little bit shorter over here. The first one we built, of course, has the house attachment. And for the second one, I did some wear and tear on the sides of the walls. So of course, to add some variance to the third one, we've got to give it a unique detail. We could just do something simple like add some storage on the side. So I'm gonna build a little lean-to on this wall. And under here, we can toss in some things like hay, some barrels, just things you would find around farmland. And then maybe on this side, we can place a little wagon. We go i think that does the job so the big structural focal points of this farmland are all done now but as you can see we're kind of still missing the main purpose of this area yeah the crops we, we need a lot of them tons actually and i think the best place to start is honestly pathing once we get some paths in place we can get a better sense of where we're going to plant our crops Essentially, we're using these paths to pretty much help frame everything out for us. So I'm going to rough out some paths that circle our fields and also lead back to our base. And I think adding in some smaller off-beaten paths will add some character to the fields as well. Not only do these smaller paths help connect everything, they also make it seem like these structures have use and purpose, as if these paths have been carved out by someone over time. Oof, this has taken quite a bit out of my shovel. I'm really gonna have to get some more villagers here soon. I am in desperate need of unbreaking. But for now, there's nothing a little bit of XP can't fix for us. There we go, all healed up. All right, let's get back to work on these paths. And hopefully that repair will get us through the last little bit of pathing that we need to do. This is the last connection we need to make up here. And I think we're done. So let's take a look to see what we got. Yes, this is starting to look so good. You can see what a difference it's already made to lay out the paths. Now we can get a pretty clear idea of where each set of crops will go as well. Yep. I'm really happy with this. Now the last spots we should add in is maybe a path over towards here. I don't think I'm gonna add this bridge I was talking about in today, just because it would be quite a bit of work and I don't really know exactly what I wanna do with it yet. However, having a nice little path in here for us already will be a lot easier than having to fix this later. And I think too about right here should be good. All right, I've done a quick run through of these paths and I'm really happy with how they're laid out. Now, before we get onto the big task of planting all these crops, I think it will be worth lining up some of these paths with some fencing and decoration. So the main paths are all decorated with the fencing and azalea leaves. And I left some of the smaller paths undecorated to make them feel more like natural paths that have been stamped out over time. So now that we've got most of the pathing sorted out, I think it's finally time for the big, big project, which is, uh, yeah. This place needs a lot of crops. 
But it's a good thing that while we were doing this, I have been harvesting some wheat, which means I have tons and tons of seeds to get started with. However, the one thing I don't have yet is a diamond hoe. And I think it's finally time that we make one. Let's grab these diamonds and we'll get that crafted. And since we have 36 levels, we may as well enchant it. So let's head on over to our little enchanting forest and let's give this a shot. Efficiency and unbreaking. Actually, you know what? That's pretty much perfect. I don't really think I could have asked for anything better. Well, I guess all we really have left to do now is just get started on the fields. We've got lots and lots of planting to do. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be here longer than I realize. So I've got a pretty big chunk of the field tilled, and I think I'm gonna start with wheat seeds. Wheat fields are such a classic. They're beautiful. You can't go wrong with them. So I figured I might as well use that as my starting point for this area and then go from there. Oh, jeez. Oh my gosh. Can I help you, buddy? There you go. Come on, swim. Be free. Go. Sometimes squids just cannot be helped in this game. So after planting the giant wheat fields, I moved on to some other sections beside it. This turned out to be such a big project that I ended up doing some of it on stream. The VOD is under the live tab if you're interested in watching it. We had such a fun time figuring out what to plant in order to make each section stand out. And I would say these fields are starting to shape up quite nicely. I actually ended up having to make a lot of changes along the way. Like when I first started, these fields were potatoes and beets, but there was way too much green going on. So I ended up switching this to pumpkins with sunflowers and some dandelions. And I've got to give a huge shout out to chat for that suggestion. It looks incredible. So this area is starting to come together really nicely. And a lot of my inspiration actually came from looking at photos of fields from the Netherlands. That's kind of the jumping off point I had with the windmills. And then when I saw of the flowers surrounding it, I was like, wow, yes. This is kind of the direction that I want to take the farmland. But as you can see walking through here, there's still quite a bit of work to be done. The front facing fields are all pretty much complete. However, the back of this farmland needs a lot of work still. So it's definitely time for me to get back to tilling all of this land. And then we can figure out what we want to place here. Hi, are you eating my grass? No answer, okay, a little awkward. All right, all right. All right, we finally got all of this land tilled and boy, oh boy, was it a lot. But that means we can move on to the fun part, which is planting all of the crops. So we have quite a few decisions to make on where things are gonna go. So I have some thoughts based on what we already have around us. So for example, a wheat field over here could frame that pumpkin patch really nicely. And I'll just toss some seeds down here to remember that placement. And as for the spot above that little wheat field, I was kind of thinking about putting in a melon patch somewhere. I don't want anything too big, so I feel like this spot would be perfect. I think adding some extra things in between the melons like azalea leaves would look really nice. This will provide some nice texture while keeping with the same color palette. I think some of these fields could do with a little bit more separation. So I'm gonna keep using azalea leaves to mark out where each crop area will go. Now for around some of these windmills, I think I would like for them to be surrounded by tulips. And it's a good thing I live in a flower forest because I have so many of these at my disposal. All right, let's give this a shot and see what it looks like. Based on this little patch alone, I think I'm gonna like it. You know what? That actually looks really cute. I think this area is shaping up to look really nice. Now all I have to do is keep chipping away at these fields and we'll be done. So my idea for these fields is to try and add flowers that would complement the crops that I'm placing for each section. So for example, in the watermelon field, I went with some azalea bushes and alliums. And for this wheat field, I went with some rose bushes again because they complement the wheat really nicely. I wanted to get another lilac field close to the one we had placed earlier just to balance it off a bit. And I had the idea to place some cherry petals and drip leaf amongst them. I think this one has turned out to be one of my favorite combinations so far, especially because I've often been forgetting to use some of the new cherry items from the latest update. I'm actually really excited to see what it all looks like grown in though, because right now it's still a little bit hard to visualize with the crops not being fully grown. This has been a really big project, but honestly, so, so worth it. All right, last potato going in. Boom. And I think we're done. And after waiting around for a little bit so the crops could fully grow in, here's what our farmland looks like. Walking through here now that all of the crops have grown out is just so nice. 
I honestly think this might be my favorite farmland project I've ever done. I'm really happy that I went with mixing and matching different flowers within the crop fields. I think it just brings so much more vibrancy and texture to the mix. And I really love how every path you walk down has a different vibe to it. Yeah, I would say this was well worth the time. Now the crops are fully planted, however, we're not quite done with this area yet. There's still quite a few spots that need to be patched up. We need some proper steps. We need to add a little bit more greenery to areas like this. And although I love how the fields look, some could definitely do with some trees planted in between them. These are all very easy fixes though. So I'm gonna start by adding in some steps around this place. I think it's time we get rid of this bed and just give this a little bone meal. I think the front of this windmill could do with that as well. Perfect. Basically, we're just bringing back some of the things that we took away while we were building. Now, as for this area over here, I contemplated adding in some fields towards the back here as well, but I opted to just leave it kind of as is for now. I figured this has a lot of space where we could eventually add another build to this area. So for now, we'll just keep it nice and simple by adding some greenery back. Let's bone meal some of this grass and plant back a couple trees. There we go, that area is blended back into the landscape now. All right, now to add a couple more trees to these fields. I don't wanna add anything to this field because I actually like how bold it looks having the whole thing as wheat. Plus it'll kind of kill off some of our lines of sight. So I would say that most of these front fields are kind of out of the question. The back fields, however, I think we could definitely fit in a few trees. I have a ton of oak saplings to use, but I could do with a couple more birch. There we go, that should be enough. All right, let's get a couple more planted. Yeah, I think these trees are looking really nice in these fields. It just breaks everything up a little bit by adding more texture and height. Honestly, I usually tend to add a lot more details to my fields, such as rock piles, bales of hay, all of that stuff. However, this time around, I kind of like how these ones look more minimal, especially because we added so much texture and variance in some of these other fields with having different types of flowers in them. Yeah, I think they're perfect the way they are. And this whole area is looking great. I feel like this project has completely transformed our base. It's also given me so much inspiration for what comes next. For example, now I feel like this is an obvious spot to have more farm land for the sheep and other animals. In front of here, we could do like a cute little fishing dock. There's a lot of space over to the side we can work with here. It's definitely given me so, so much inspiration. I mean, look how cool that looks. I love it. And it's just gonna keep getting better with the more builds we add to this area. Also, the sight lines around this build have started to look incredibly cool. For example, take a look at the view that we have walking from the Sniffer Sanctuary. Seeing these windmills slowly coming into view as we walk along this path is so cool. Ugh, I love it so much. All right, everyone, I think that's going to be it for today's episode. We made a ton of progress on this base today, and I'm so, so happy. And most of all, I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.